Hey guys, I'm Mark. Today I'm in Hershey, Pennsylvania. So if you've ever heard of a Hershey's chocolate bar, that's where I am. If you live within a few hours of Hershey, then you may have heard of Hershey Park, which is a theme park that's very popular on the East Coast of the United States. In fact, I came here when I was in high school for our senior class trip. I also came here in middle school. But if you know of Hershey Park, then you still may not have heard of Hershey Gardens. It's a 23-acre expanse that overlooks the park itself. And today, I'm standing inside the conservatory in what's called their Butterfly Atrium. It's a brand new building. Well, it was built or finished in 2016. So it's new as far as Hershey Gardens goes. But today, we're going to talk about this place and all the neat stuff that they got going on inside of here. So today with me is Amy, and she is the senior director here at Hershey Gardens. So Amy, how about you tell us a little bit about the place? Sure. So for many years, we had a butterfly house that was outdoors and covered mm -hmm. in mesh. And we were only allowed yeah. to have native butterflies there, native to North America. When we built the conservatory, we really wanted to expand that on mm -hmm. that. So now that we have an indoor space, we can um, house native as well as tropical butterflies. So we get lots of our butterflies from um, Central and South America, Southeast Asia. So we have a much broader um, variety. Plus we have this just amazing tropical oasis. It's a beautiful place to be. Yeah. Um, I guess you can have it open year round now. It's a yes. constant temperature and there's yes. just always something to see. Yeah, it's a little warm and humid, but mm. that's great for the butterflies. You can see how well they're flying today. Um, we also were able to um, get a cacao tree, which we weren't able to have outside before. So yes. we're really excited in Hershey to have one of those because that's where cocoa beans come from. So we've really got a lot of um, great things happening in here. Yes. Everything goes back to Hershey. <laughs> it's, it's a very, very beautiful place. And not just the, the butterflies thrive in here, but I mean, you now have a huge collection of tropical plants. I mean, yeah. there's, there's orchids, there's all kinds of neat stuff in here. Yeah, but yeah. I guess uh, a lot of these plants they serve as just nectar plants for the butterflies as well as just yes. visual stuff. Yes, so we're highly regulated because we don't want to introduce any non-native species mm -hmm. to Pennsylvania. So um, we are not allowed to breed butterflies here. So we don't have host plants, which are the plants that butterflies like to lay their eggs on. Okay. We only have nectar plants. So we um, have to match up the plants that we have with what the butterflies like. Plus we offer some supplemental food, um, some sort of rotting fruit. They I've love Gatorade. They, do love, they like Gatorade. <laughs> yes, That's we have some Gatorade. So um, we, we want to keep them happy and well fed, but we don't want them to reproduce in here. Sure. And, and things are pretty tight and secure, I've noticed. You've got a yes. set of double doors. You've yes. got a set of mirrors when you leave. You have to be inspected and checked out. You have out. to make Nothing's... sure there are no hitchhikers trying to get outside. Sure. Well, that's, that's wonderful. Yeah. It's, it's just such an incredible place. So how do, how do you guys get your butterflies? Is this, this is sort right. of uh, the main uh, way of how it all starts, isn't yes. it? Yes, so this is called our chrysalis cabinet. Mm -hmm. And we get um, hundreds of chrysalids every week that come hundreds. via FedEx. So <laughs> okay. they get shipped to us. And then on Friday um, is typically the day that they arrive. We have someone who comes in, she opens the package, inspects the chrysalids to make sure they don't have any parasites, that they haven't already emerged. Okay. Um, we want them to all still be inside, um, inside there. Then she takes them out, she identifies them, they get glued to a small piece of paper, and then we hang them in our chrysalis cabinet, much like they would hang from a leaf or a um, mm -hmm. branch. And then there's, um, it's humidity controlled and temperature controlled in there as well. And then eventually they will emerge. We give them a little time for their wings to kind of inflate. The blood has to get flowing so that mm -hmm. they can fly. Then we collect them and every morning we release them into the atrium. It's fascinating. Yeah. It's interesting to me that you have all of these different species too that I guess like to be under a pretty similar climate. I mean, the temperature is yep. the same, humidity is the same, the lighting yep. is the same, yep. and you've got all these different crazy things in here. Yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty awesome. So these are butterflies, and then we do have moth cocoons over there, and you can see there's a very large atlas moth hanging out. There's a huge <laughs> atlas moth hanging out right here. I've, yeah. I've never seen a, uh, a butterfly or moth that large in my yeah. life. It's, it's crazy. There was another one in here earlier this morning when we were in mm -hmm. here, and I got a pretty cool camera angle of that because this guy on the outside was checking out the one on the inside. Yeah. It was pretty neat. Yeah, so you may notice we have these mesh um, containers here, and that mm -hmm. is because a lot of moths indiscriminately lay eggs on any plant. Um, okay. Most butterflies have particular plants they like. Monarchs like milkweed, sure. um, and they will only lay eggs on those. But moths, um, some of them will just lay them anywhere. So since we can't have them laying eggs out, outside of a, an enclosure, they get 
to stay in the okay. screened in it's just, areas so, so, so we can kind of control. Racks. And then all of that stuff gets frozen at sub-zero temperatures before it's removed from the, oh, from wow. the conservatory. So that's kind of how we well, control that. Speaking about temperature, I mean, you would think when these guys get shipped to you mm -hmm. in boxes, are they in like styrofoam boxes? I mean, I guess the temperature it's, has to it's be... It's basically a cardboard box with some cotton in it to keep them. And they're, they're cool when they get sent. And uh -huh. then it's, it, they're sent FedEx and they get here in a very quick period of time so okay. that they don't emerge. Um, and sometimes if something happens and it gets delayed, they'll start to emerge before we can get to them, which is never a good thing. But we have very, very good... <laughs> Um, shipping partners, and we have a really great, um, great success doing it this way. Yeah, it seems like you guys have had some practice now to work out the kinks. Yeah. Because I would have thought, you know, being um, a, being seasonal at one point, and now going yes. to open year round, that shipping something as delicate looking as these um, by FedEx, I mean. Yeah. They're less delicate than you may think. They're they yeah. they're pretty hardy, which is cool. Because they're all wrapped yeah. up in uh, protected nature's way, huh? Yeah. And then we also um, use this space to display some of our insects and um, saw that yeah and cool bugs. So we've got lots of varieties of roaches, which a lot of people <laughs> don't love, but they're what? very interesting and they're very important to the ecosystem. So we like to talk about that. I didn't realize there were so many different kinds and yes. how how crazy looking some of them are. Yeah, and how large they are. This one is in South America, which is a mm -hmm. good thing because if that was flying around my house, I would be a little <laughs> disturbed. But sure. Um, you know, they, they're great recyclers, cockroaches. I think a lot of people don't know that. So they'll eat wood and things like that. So they're very good at um, cleaning debris and taking care of the forest floor. So there's lots of good reasons to have these bugs around. And we just had Bugarama last weekend. We like to teach people that um, bugs aren't gross and scary. They're really actually important to everything that we do and they're good to have. And I used to be terrified of them, but now I'll hold a tarantula sure. or a Madagascar hissing cockroach and appreciate them. Well, that's very good. Yeah, everything everything has a purpose. Everything serves a purpose. Yes. And uh, I think if you can educate kids or especially the younger generations to that so that they're keen to that, then mm -hmm. they get that sense of appreciation and not just for, you know, what what part of the puzzle does this animal fit, but also um, the implications of how something doesn't fit in all that and yes. how things like invasive species and things can kind of throw stuff out of whack it just kind of brings everything into perspective in that yep. way yep now, you guys are really big into having kids here i mean i mentioned that i came here um, in high school and middle school on a field mm -hmm. trip so that seems to be a yeah we part see of your guys many mission. many children on field trips we have yeah. lots of great programs around mm -hmm. um, butterflies and gardening we actually have some programs where small kids can get their hands dirty and actually plant seeds and help us to plant um, one of our gardens each spring and then they help us harvest in the fall so it's really that's, a lot of fun. That's wonderful. Yeah. That's wonderful. Well, you guys are doing an excellent job. I really can't say uh, how much I appreciate this. And you guys just keep such a neat place. I'm, I'm, I'm shocked at how many people that you can bring through here. I mean, you've got not just people, but classes of children. And yeah. everything just still remains so intact and beautiful <laughs> and yeah. just ready for the next day. We have a great team. And we have yeah. amazingly knowledgeable people who work in the Butterfly Atrium and out in the gardens that can answer questions and teach people. So it's really, it's a good place to be. Do you guys have volunteers in the Butterfly Atrium as yes. well? Yes, we do. We have okay. to have um, at least two people working at all times, one at each door, entrance and exit. And then we often have volunteers who come in to help um, clean and prune and um, work the doors and help with guests. So yeah. we're, just like outside, we really depend a lot on volunteers well, here. Well, that's wonderful. It's definitely a place that it wouldn't be a hard thing to find somebody that would want to be here. Yeah. And it's, uh, whether you're working here, volunteering here, or just coming to visit, it's just an awesome place. Yeah. So. Great. All right. Well, thank you, Amy, so My much pleasure. for sharing. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you want to learn more about Hershey Gardens mm -hmm. in general, where can people go? Uh, HersheyGardens.org. Okay. All the information you need to know about hours and admission prices and programs is all right there. Sure. Awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you guys so much again. I'll see you next time. Thank you.